Okay, so what I wanted to do today, uh, this video, all well, this is not like uh, essential for the class, but uh, just to show you this program, MathCAD, which is, um, you know, very useful for a lot of the problems we're going to do in this course, but also uh, is uh, very useful for all engineering courses. Um, so you can download this if you would Google PTC MathCAD, you can download a student version. Um, sometimes it, you know, you'll download a full version, but then uh, the everything I'm going to talk about here is in is, is the capabilities are in the student version. Okay, so some of the things like solving simultaneous equations and matrix operations and they're doing integrals and derivatives are not really supported in MathCAD. If you do need those things, actually, I would recommend using Mathematica or MATLAB if you have to solve it, you know, uh, with a numerical method. But what MathCAD is very strong at is easily solving, like, engineering, design, and homework type of problems, okay? Uh, so basic algebra type of stuff. So I'm going to do an example here. So uh, I've started MathCAD. You can see it up here. Um, and then I've just cut and paste in here from the ebook problem 4.2, just to pick a problem to do. And we'll solve this problem in MathCAD. You can see some of the advantages, okay? So this is one of these ones where um, you have to figure out uh, the displacement of the A relative to, to D, right? So we're going to have to figure out the displacement of a, B, and add the displacement of B, C, and add the displacement of C, D, add them all together, and they get the total displacement, okay? Uh, what I like about MathCAD is two things. One, that, you know, obviously it does the calculations for you, so you can just define variables, so you don't have to worry about making a math error and then going back and recalculating everything again. And it also handles units very well, which is sometimes a really tedious or frustrating thing to make sure you get your... BTUs into watts or whatever it is, okay? And it does a good job of that. So, okay, so here is the, the problem. So the first thing you want to do is actually define variables. So so let's do that, right? So I know it's in text here, and I don't have them, but 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 I'm gonna actually define those here. So you can just click, and then if you just start to type in like D, and let, so I'm gonna type in the diameter for section A B, right? So D, A, B. So if you hit D, you'll get the D. And then if you hit the little underscore symbol, right, you can make it a subscript and then just do A, B. And now we're going to set it equal to 0.75 inches. So we're going to define this variable to have a value of 0.75 inches. So we use, if you hit the colon, oh, I know you can't see my keyboard, but I hit the colon, and then that makes the colon equal, so it's defining it, okay? So we're going to define it as 0 0.75, and you could leave it as that, but we're going to put units on it. So I'm going to multiply it by, so I hit the multiplication sign, and then I'm just going to type IN, because it recognizes most units, so inches. So there you go. So now, you could actually say, okay, DAB, what is that equal to? And you can see here, it actually gives me the answer in meters. I could actually get it in miles or angstroms, I guess. I don't know, whatever else. Millimeters, right? And what it's doing is converting this variable from inches into millimeters, okay? So I never really do it that well, but you can actually, up here, you, it's a little hard for you to see, but there's uh, you can change the base units to like uh, from metric, like SI, to you know US stuff and so it just tends to give you more inches versus meters all right all right so let's do the same and do the other diameters so I'm just gonna cut and paste and just kind of go in and change them so we gotta do D A B D uh, B C and that's equal to one inch and then D uh, C D right and that's equal to a half of an inch. All right. What else do they give us? 
and you can you can you can move these around as you want okay and then we also need to know well I can do the lengths too why don't we define the lengths so L well, you could just put the numbers in directly but we do L A B and that's going to equal 80 inches and then likewise we'll do L B C is 150 inches and then LCD is 100 inches and uh, they also give us uh, Young's modulus right E for copper equals um, 18 to the third, one, two, three, and that's KSI. And it understands KSI as well, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna go through and get all the deltas, right? So the first thing I need to do is get, let's get the elongation of AB. So I'm gonna use this little symbols because I like to use the little, the little Greek letter delta, and those are available up here. And we're gonna define that as so I'm going to hit delta enter that in and then colon to get the equals and that is equal to the internal force in AB times the length of AB over the cross-sectional area of AB times well they're all, it's all copper so I'm just going to use E for CU right that copper Okay, now the problem is, is it says, okay, I don't know what, you've diffused this variable NAB, and I don't know what that is. And also, it'll gripe about AAB as well. They, they're not defined. So we need to kind of do that, right? So, for example, if we look up here, if we look at the free body diagram, right, clearly the internal force in section AB, oops, is going to be uh, 8 kips in compression, so minus 8 kip. I think it kips in there is 2. Okay, so we got that, right? And so that's in front of the delta. So now it, it knows that, but it doesn't like the area for AB, so I can define that as well. And that equals uh, pi, so there's a constant thing up here, so you can put in pi divided by 4, times the diameter of AB, DAB, and that's to the second power, so you just hit the little shift, and then six, which gives you a little caret, and then put two, and there you go. That's gonna give me the area in feet squared. Don't really like feet squared. I'm gonna, so let's just do it in terms of inches, and there you go. Now you can see we've got the, the displacement. Oh, and I should have put it here. So that's the elongation of AB. It's compressed, and it's in terms of feet. And again, we're not going to use feet. We want inches, so I'm going to change that to inches. And that's the answer in inches. All right. If you define this and put it down below, it screws up the order of the calculation, so it doesn't like that. It doesn't know A, A, B, so we've got to keep that up there. All right, so that's the, that's the elongation of AB. Now, if you go back and you find out that you missed, you, you calculated it wrong, or you... You know, the, the diameter of AB is really 0.175. You can just change that number up there and automatically it'll update everything, right? So that's kind of nice. All right, so now we just got to do the same thing for BC and CD. A another cool thing is I can just kind of cut and paste this stuff, and I don't have to type it over, right? In fact, we'll change all this to BC. So in, in cross-section BC, we're going to have the 8 kips in compression and then another 10 kips in tension. So the, the, we would have a net 2 kips in tension. So it's going to be 2 kips. The area for BC is the same equation, but we're just going to change the diameter to that. And so there it is for that. And uh, we can change all these variables right, to be for whatever it is for BC. And I think now you kind of get the idea of what's going on here, right? So that's that elongation, and then we can do the 
same thing for CD. I'll go back and change the numbers. Just gonna change all these for now. Oops. So also the nice thing about this is it allows you to do some check calculations that you might not do otherwise because they just take time and you're kind of sick of doing the calculations, but we can do that here. Okay, we need to get the force in CD. So uh, that would be, well, look, CD's right here. So CD is clearly in six kips in, in tension. So I'm going to change this to be six. So there are the three elongations. You see it's got the, the right sign on all those. And now we have to just get the total elongation. So I'll pull down that delta symbol again. There's probably a shortcut for that. I honestly don't know what that is. And it's going to be this plus And there it is. There's our answer, right? Oops, time equals. Okay, so there's our answer, right? So you can see it got all the units correct. I don't have to worry about like mega versus kip versus, you know, all that. And, 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 and uh, again, like I said, if you, well, it won't make a calculation mistake, but let's say you incorrectly put in one of the numbers here, right? Maybe this is really. A different material, maybe it's steel, right? So you're going to have 30, right? As as the Young's modulus, and you can see the numbers change in real time. All right, let's put action was 18. All right, so that's 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 pretty good. You can actually put in spreadsheets. I think it takes that capability. The full up version, what does it let you do? Uh, you know, like you can set up matrices and you can do. Plots. I don't know if we can do a plot in the default thing. Maybe you can. I don't know. I actually never really plot. It looks like you can, but I actually don't ever do that. I, I just use it like in this format. I find that's really useful. Like if I need to do something more complicated, I'll tend to use MATLAB or Mathematica. But uh, yeah. So for this class, I'll obviously in class we'll tend to solve the problems by hand, and you know you can continue to do that for homework. Uh, but I'll start putting solutions also using MathCAD because I think it is quite useful, like I said, for this class and for other classes as well. All right, uh, that's it.